Hello fellow future enthusiasts. On Demystifying, we do deep dives on science, futurism, and speculative technology. My name is Thor, and I will be your host today. Science is undergoing a nuclear renaissance. Technologies we dreamed of in science fiction are becoming applied and practical today. We're going to look at a material technology with the ability to convert radioactivity directly into electricity using nanomaterial engineering. At the end of the video, we'll look at the technical details of how these systems are made and what specifications are required. As technology advances, refinements in all parts of the nuclear supply system can be seen. Deuterium production, for example, has seen massive efficiency improvements. Deuterium or heavy water can be produced today in a garage size setup with yields of around 1 liter per 6.5 kilowatts. Pretty impressive, considering deuterium was once one of the more difficult to source components in the nuclear supply chain. SMRs, or small modular reactors, are further evidence of leaping progress in efficiency. These mobile systems provide up to 300 megawatts and are typically small enough to fit into a shipping container. Material science, computer simulation, with machine learning and increasing understanding of the atomic and quantum realm have motivated these leaps. These advances are impressive, but they are just the tip of an iceberg rarely seen in public science. How about a material that converts radiation into electricity? That would be an invaluable material for the outer skin of a spacecraft or to line the inside of a large fusion reactor. When used in current reactor systems, it's estimated such a material can reduce the size of a nuclear power facility by 90%. Nanostructures make nuclear reactors so small that we end up at the other extreme of material demand, where we'll need to design the smallest reactors we've yet envisioned. Firstly, let's briefly cover the basics. Nuclear power plants rely on a conversion medium to harness the energy of nuclear reactions. What if we had a way to directly convert radiation particles into energy instead of having to collect the thermal energy they deposit in their environment? Nanostructures seek to answer this question. We can observe the path energy takes from a fission reactor to the power grid, with each step along this pathway limiting the peak efficiency of the plant. Heat exchangers, turbines, and plumbing each reduce overall efficiency. The holy grail of nuclear fission power is a solid-state power converter capable of harnessing fission products as well as radiation flux. Removing the conversion process, also known as the thermomechanical stage, converts radiation directly into electricity with only a single hit to efficiency. The innovations we're discussing today will allow us to achieve this science fiction capability to convert radioactive particle streams and even nuclear waste directly into electricity. How directly? The interaction converting energy of charged particles involves quantum scale interactions, those occurring at subatomic distances and timescales. Interactions at this scale are removed from most limitations of materials and have unique thermal states. At the subatomic scale, particles don't heat up. Thermal energy is indistinguishable from particle motion. Therefore, by tapping into the quantum realm, we can annihilate matter and release energy in very small amounts. Particle radiation from a fission or fusion reaction is the energy source we use to annihilate matter in this system. We can use particle streams from a particle accelerator to make energy. But wait, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? Of course, if you shoot enough high-energy radiation at some material, it'll eventually release some energy. What's so interesting about that? That's what particle accelerators do. Here's the thing, we don't need a complex radiation source. We can use the normal output of a commercial miniature nuclear reactor to power a nano-hetero high-efficiency generator. Or we can design new reactors around the nanostructure. Researchers predict these reactors will have to be very small to work reliably, around half a meter in diameter. We also don't need a single-use target object that becomes destroyed after one use. CICI is one kind of nano-heterostructure, a nanomaterial that can be used constantly and repeatedly, though it will eventually wear out after enough cycles or when its fuel is depleted. A sheet of this material can both act as radiation shielding and as a direct source of power. 
This material is not theoretical. We can manufacture it using well-documented processes. In practice, we'll stack sheets of insulator and conductor material to form the CICI structure. CICI embedded mechanisms are also known as a fission battery, in broad terms. The motion of nuclear particles through the alternating layers of conductor and insulator produces electrical charge, which builds up before instantaneous release like a capacitor. This system completes the entire energy cycle from energy source to battery storage to consumer in a single mechanism. Think about this for a moment. A small, portable, and safe system that can store large amounts of energy and provide it on demand that does not require a fission reaction. Energy yields are an order of magnitude above the energy density achieved by current advanced reactors with this system. This is a total paradigm shift for energy storage and production at all scales. CICI are not the only nano-hetero structures of interest. Some are engineered to produce specific types of radiation instead of electron potential. Imagine being able to replace a neutron source with a single solid-state mechanism as small as a battery. It's an exciting proposition. Homogeneous nano-heterostructures operate differently from the CICI battery. They require a source of fission products, meaning they either need to be designed around a fission process or placed nearby a nuclear reactor. This capability can be used inside nuclear fusion reactors, where ultra-thin layers of nano-heterostructured material can cover the morphology of the reaction chamber. These materials can even deflect the energy they produce at an angle incident to the fusion source, making them highly useful for assisting in nuclear reactions or for propulsion. More conservatively, this capability can be used for communication via particle streams over vast distances and through atmospheres. In a paper published in Energy and Power Engineering, research conducted at Los Alamos found a 3 micron thick alpha flux source, probably plutonium or polonium, surrounded by a 50 micrometer thick layer of aluminum substrate with two sides, is a functional structure. A battery of these structures occupying 40 cubic centimeters and weighing 200 grams can produce a steady 15 watts of power. This could power an artificial heart for 40 years, or for applications with longer release intervals like space applications, up to 400 years, using americium as the alpha source. This design can be changed slightly to allow it to work like a laser, outputting electromagnetic energy from visible light into the terahertz range. We already understand improvements we can make to the battery we just described. By using nanobeads instead of stacked layers, heat resistance and efficiency can be increased. Nanotubes capable of 90% efficiency are also discussed, but these have not yet been practical in the lab and so remain theoretical. Two other types of nanoheterostructures include those that utilize fusion products and those that use nuclear transmutation reactions. The range of applications and properties is wide. The first products using this technology, using the most reliable and well-understood nanostructures, will be isotopic batteries operating by nuclear transmutation. Research suggests this will look like a 50 micrometer thick foil producing 100 milliwatts per square centimeter using polonium. Such a battery would have a half-life of about 140 days, making it very useful for spacecraft. Nano-heterostructures can also be made to absorb fission products from an active fission reaction, such as inside a nuclear reactor. The material we classify as waste can be absorbed by such a structure, converted into useful radiation or electricity. Using a similar material as the system we just described, a fission product converter can produce around 5 kilowatts of power per cubic millimeter. This is a ton of energy, and cooling this mechanism is not yet possible so we'll have to settle with 1 kilowatt per cubic centimeter using known cooling methods. In our next video, we'll take a look at other types of nanoheterostructures and other types of nanostructures in general. Leave a comment with any questions or ideas you have, and like and subscribe if you'd like more content like this.